Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is my Freightburger Bootcamp Live. I do these trainings every week and today I have a special guest. I'm going to intro her in a minute, but she's going to share with you four tips, okay? Four tips, four things that she did to do over $1 million in business as a freight agent, okay? But it actually gets better than that because not only did she do over a $1 million in sales, she actually, so far this year, and it's only August, what, 8th? She's already done over $1.2 million in sales as a freight agent. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce her in a minute, okay? But I wanna thank you for joining me. For those of you that are catching me on replay, hit me in the comments with hashtag replay. All right. I love to hear from my replay folks. I know sometimes you can't make it live. That's okay. Catch it on replay or catch it on my YouTube channel. No problem. All right. So for those of you, let's do quick shout outs. All right. Let's do some shout outs before we, uh, before we get the ball rolling here on the training. Again, today we're going to, she's going to share with you. She, oh, I kind of, I, I let the cat out of the bag. She is going to share with you uh, how uh, four tips on how she's able to do over $1.2 million in sales this year so far. So I'm assuming she's probably going to hit over 2 million in sales because she's already on pace. So um, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. I'm in the Buffalo, New York area. I'll let her share where she's coming in from when, uh, when the time is right. But yes, uh, do me that favor right now. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know where you're logging in from. I'll try to give you some shout outs and then we're going to get this this show on the road here in just a couple of minutes, okay? So who do we got here? We've got uh, Michael Burns from Shelby, Ohio. We've got uh, Gustavo Perella from Venezuela. Amazing. We got Next Link from Valley Stream, New York. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got uh, Regender from Southgate, Michigan. We've got Nardell from Arcadia, Wisconsin. Joseph Moore from Atlanta, Georgia. We've got Joshua from Texas. We have a random Facebook user from Houston, Texas. They, they didn't give me a name. And what else we got? We've got Strong Mind Transport from Texas. We've got Val Eric from Santa Clarita, California. Antoinette from Atlanta. MMB from, oh, it skipped here, from Virginia. Aaron Barrios from Guatemala City. Man, we've got people from all over the place. It's crazy. Canada is going to ring in here very soon. We got Charles Cartwright from Costa Rica, Madison from Winterset, Iowa, Chriselle from Conroe, Texas, Chuck Richardson from Atlanta, Reginder from Williamsburg, Virginia, Juan from Venezuela. Welcome. Michael from uh, Hesperia, California, George from Alabama, Bojan from Sheridan, Wyoming, temporarily in Belgrade, Serbia. Oh my God, this is like the International Fest today. I love it. Hunter Seward from Rochester, New York. Uh, Dianalis, Di I, I'm sorry, I'm probably murdering that, but Dianalis Rodriguez from West, West Palm, Florida. That's where my father is. Uh, Bertie from Houston, Texas. And geez, we've got, oh man, all over the place. George Syracuse from Scranton, PA. Sandra from Pensacola, Florida, and Terry from Buchanan, Michigan. Listen, if I didn't get to your name, I apologize. I'll try it next time. Um, I know you guys are excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. I'm going to be introducing a special guest here in just a minute. Um, but today, we're going to talk about four tips, four strategies, four things that my guest did to build a seven-figure freight agent business, okay? So she's a freight agent. Now, She's not only a freight agent, but she's been on my on this show before. All right, so I've I've actually had her on the show before. So why don't I bring her up really quick? And I think you guys will probably recognize her. All right, this is my friend, and I'm going to murder her last name because I'm terrible at these names. But Lita Hakobian. You did a great job, then. All right, awesome. <laughs> so Lita is a freight agent, and who are you with, Lita? I always freight tech. Freight Tech. She's an agent for Freight Tech. She found her home over a year ago now, I think, wasn't it? About a year ago? Yes. I yeah. Had it June. yeah, about a year ago, she found her home at Freight Tech and she's doing extremely well. Today, she's going to share with us four tips that helped her to grow a seven-figure business. But before we do that, you've got a really interesting background. For those that didn't catch the first interview, if you guys want to try to catch that, you can go 
to my YouTube channel and go to freight agent interview, freight agent success stories. And you can see her interview there where she kind of talks about her origin story. But why don't you just give a quick intro to everybody, let them know, you know, a uh, quick background and then where you're located right now. And uh, we'll go from there. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Lida Hakopian and uh, I'm a freight broker with Freight Tech. Actually, I started my logistics journey back 2016 as a truck driver and um, I did some dispatching after that. And then um, after being tired of this, all these rude brokers, I decided I will be the nicest broker <laughs> possible. So I decided to go into brokerage. Uh, well, and then um, I took Dennis Brown course and I worked hard and I gained my customers and yeah, and I did over one and a two million in sales this year till July 31st. And where are you based out of right now? Now I know you, you travel oh, yes. a lot. You're a big traveler. You love to travel. So where are you? At I am now? joining you from Armenia. So I, I came here to open my agency and uh, yeah. So you're from Armenia, but then you lived in the States and now yes. right now, currently you're back traveling in Armenia. Yes, I'm just visiting, yeah. So you're like the jet set freight agent. Yes, I am, you know, working remotely, traveling. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Perfect. All right, great. So listen, everybody's eager and anxious to find out what the secret is, right? Everybody thinks there's these big secrets and the things you're going to share today I'm going to tell you, you, everybody that's listening to this, you have probably heard every one of these things before, but I wanted to have Lita on because when I say these things, you don't believe me. Okay. For whatever reason, you guys don't believe me. I wanted you to hear it directly from her because she's the one who's done this and is literally expanding, growing her brokerage. I, I think she's going to do over $2 million in sales this year. Do you agree? Yes. She's going to do over 200, 200, two million dollars in sales this year. What are your profit margins typically, percentage wise? Uh, I think it is. Uh, let me check. I don't remember. I think it was about uh, 15, fifteen. Yeah, about, almost sixteen. Yeah, almost sixteen percent. So on two million dollars in sales at sixteen percent, that's over three hundred and twenty thousand dollars in gross profit. And I trust me, she doesn't have a lot of overhead. Okay. Other than when she books these crazy flights across the ocean, I'm sure that gets expensive, but, um, but listen, she's going to share with you four tips and, uh, I just want you guys to lean in, take some notes. All right. And at the end, we're going to do some live Q and a. So if you guys have questions for me or for Lita or for whatever, you can ask those at the end, hold the questions to the end because I won't see them. We won't get to them. Okay. So why don't you take it away, Lita? Give us, give us those four tips, start out with number one, and then we'll work our way through. Okay, sounds good. So I, I am prepared, guys. Um, so first tip I want to share with you is finding your niche. I know that when I just started, like I was listening to Dennis Brown and I was thinking, what this man is saying, how I should find my niche, how, like there are so many niches, how I should find the right one, which one should I focus to, you know, to succeed. But the thing is, you cannot figure it out, like, in one day you know you have to try and you have to see what is working and uh, you have to see what you are capable to do for example for me i was a reefer driver and i thought oh let's do the reefer but when i found my first reefer customer i didn't have any experience as a freight broker agent and it was very uh, difficult for me because reefer is very time sensitive and uh, this customer was very demanding. Of course, I understand it is his product requir requirements. Then uh, I always like geometry, so I decided let's go into flatbed. So I decided to dig into flatbed, and uh, I found my uh, steel customer, transformer customer, steel sheet. Um, yeah. So and then I started only doing flatbed, but. Uh, during the process, you gain like a, a little bit different, you know, niches, but the main niche still stays, you know, the ones that you focus because sometimes customers are like, they might have like drive and load once in a while, right? And uh, it is not uh, difficult to like move this lot. If you do hot shot or flat that drive and it's very easy. But uh, the main focus, you still, you know, want to focus on one niche. So. Uh, how do you find this niche? Uh, you just look what you like. 
I know a freight broker who, who used to be military. So he focuses only on military freight because that's what he knows, what, that's what he likes. If you like, like farming or if you like produce, then maybe go and uh, try to, you know, do reefer. If you are like, if you like dry products, go and do dry products. And also it depends what kind of experience you have. What uh, what you know more about? Because when you are trying to talk to customer, you have to have an idea what you are talking. Because if you don't have an idea about flatbed lots, when you call them or you visit them, then it will be very hard, and they will feel that you you don't know. You know all this Yeah, stuff. I love that. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. And Lita just said it. Riches are in niches. You got to yeah. niche down, especially when you first start. There's this um, misunderstanding or confusion when you come into the industry as a freight broker, freight agent, that you need to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Because if you don't, you might miss an opportunity. The problem is you can't be an expert in everything. You can't service everything. You can't even fully understand every niche, right? Because every niche has its nuances. So what Lita did, she tried a niche. It wasn't what she liked. It wasn't what she felt she was going to be really good at. So she pivoted to another niche and she found her home. And that's what I want you guys to understand. Just because you start out with one niche doesn't mean you're committed to that forever. If it's not working for you, you can always pivot, okay? So number one is riches are in niches, and you did a great job there. I love the way you explained it. Talk to us about number two. Yes, now, number two tip I want to share is start local. Uh, I think uh, starting with local companies, visiting them, just introducing yourself and saying, hey, I am based out of like let's say South Carolina, I am your neighbor, you know, I am right in front of you, I can come even to visit you. And this is like great starting point, you know, and uh, maybe you will find someone who knows you, you never know, or if even if you don't find. So what I would, I used to do, I would just get like cupcakes, like 10 cupcakes or 15 cupcakes, my favorite one, different ones, and um, you have to dress accordingly, of course. You have to have business cards. And even in the beginning, I didn't have business cards, honestly. I, I would just take my paper and pen, and I would just write down. And when you go, you just don't say, hey, I am freight broker. You ask questions. You go inside. You check what they are doing. You go to warehouse, because sometimes these warehouse guys, they are very helpful. They give the shipping manager information. They give this email. They advise whom you should reach out. Um, you have to uh, dress accordingly, act accordingly, and uh, you have to be like curious, you know, because I have seen like uh, people, even like when they are sharing something, you have to look uh, professional. I think it is also very important that we don't focus a lot, but I think it is very important. Yeah, uh, no. Local is a great idea. Now, some people are very comfortable like you, you know, addressing people face to face. And some people like to kind of hide behind the phone. I love the phone, but I also know the power of face to face, especially yeah. when you're local, because you're going to be able to speak not only the lingo of their, of the freight that they're moving, but you're going to be able to speak the lingo of the life they live. So I'm yes. in Buffalo. You can talk about the Buffalo Bills. You could talk about yes. the Buffalo Sabres. You could talk about the waterfront. You could talk about, you know, any number right. of things that are specifically local that are, that are relevant and contextual to that person. And that's going to build rapport, right? If yes. I'm in Buffalo and I'm calling somebody from um, San Diego, California, yeah, we're both Americans. We're both in the U S but I, yes. but on a local level, we have nothing in common. Right. And so it's a lot harder for me to build that bond because I don't have that in common. So starting out local, I think is a great idea and it yeah. will really, it'll really help you understand who your customers are. You know, Lita said, get into their warehouse, check out their shipping operations, ask good questions, if you go out to their facilities, it's going to totally change the way you think about your customer because yeah. you will have actually stepped on that dock. And Lita left one very important element to that, that tip. Here's what I can tell you about every person who works on a dock or shipping. They all love 
cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> okay. They all love treats. They all love little small gifts like that. So I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, uh, linger on that too much, but I will tell you if, if you bring a little teeny small gift, it will definitely grease the wheels to get you in that door and to get a conversation started. All right. Awesome. So that's number two, which is can, can I add a, a little bit. Uh, yes, so of course. The thing is, uh, they get a lot of phone calls and sometimes they just hang up because they are busy. But when you go there, they cannot hang up, you know, they have to talk to you and they will remember you. Sometimes I even visited the same customer twice, honestly, like uh, it is very important, even when visiting, you don't have to go like 100 miles, you know, 200 miles, just local, 50 yes. miles. But I was very fortunate that I, I was living in South Carolina and we had a lot of companies. So in like 50 mile radius, I could find like 10, 20 companies, you know, so it. I love it. I love it. That's perfect. All right. Well, but hopefully. Hopefully she's not going to freeze up too long. Uh, are you are you unfrozen? All right, good. I can hear you. All right, cool. So let's yeah. let's move on to number three. Yes. So number three, my favorite one, which I learned from Dennis again, uh, LinkedIn. I know that people say, okay, what I am going to post. I don't know what to write. So guys, if I don't know English, uh, English is my third language. I, and you see how I speak English. I speak perfect English. So if I can write, then you can write. Uh, what I did, like, let's say I wrote my first log. So what I learned, even if it is like very simple thing, I, I used to share everything. I learned, oh, hello, I am very happy to share that I moved my first log. And I would explain what I learned during this process, what I did, you know, what mistakes I did, what uh, great things I did. And uh, try to be like persistent and be active in LinkedIn because your potential customers are in LinkedIn. And uh, you have to show yourself in LinkedIn. You have to show your knowledge. You have to show your hard work. Even if you are just starting, you know, people saw that I am learning, I am sharing. They knew that I am new. They knew that I, I have no clue what I am doing, but they gave me opportunity. Uh, one customer even gave me like three, three, three opportunities, four opportunity. Finally, I moved his lot. And after that, he gave me like 200 lots. So it is, uh, it is very important to show your hard work. And uh, again, LinkedIn, please put professional picture in LinkedIn. Because I have seen a lady with his Muslim, Muslim dress. I mean, I respect their, you know, culture. But I think like for LinkedIn, you have to be more professional. Yeah. I, I, I listen, you, you, you know, me, I'm a huge LinkedIn fan, right? Yeah, LinkedIn yeah. was LinkedIn was the primary customer acquisition tool that we used after 2008 when I joined LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. So from yeah. there on forward, we did millions and millions of dollars worth of business using LinkedIn. So I'm a huge fan there, but like anything, the platforms change over time. But what Lita did, and I watched her do this, okay? Because number one, she bought my no cold calling course, okay? And we talked about that in the first one. And she asked me for a refund and I told her, no, go back and work on it because I know it works. And she went back and worked on it. Then she contacted me and said she was sorry because she got her first customer. And we were we became very good friends at that point because she realized that I wasn't, you know, I was only trying to help her. And now she uses it as a great tool. But I've watched her very carefully. And what I've watched her do is she will put content out on LinkedIn almost every day. And that content was content about her, about what she's doing in her current business, things she's done in the past, uh, you know, when she was a truck driver and just things in general that created awareness of who she was, number one, created engagement because people would comment or like. And then she was able to take those conversations and pivot those conversations offline. I mean, the fact is nobody's going to give you a load in the comments of a LinkedIn post, but that's not the goal, right? The goal is- I got that a lot from the comments, Danny. Oh my no, God. Never say never, okay? Because oh my God. You're, 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 better than, you're way better than me, that's for sure. Because I'm telling you, the goal is to simply start a conversation with your target market. And, you know, I know creating content and putting content out there is a little scary for some people, but I promise you it works. And 
if you're a freight broker or a freight agent and your your niche is produce or your niche is steel or your niche is building supplies or your niche is international freight, I promise you, your prospects are on LinkedIn. So you need to be there. And so we'll leave it at that. Okay. So for LinkedIn, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be professional and you need to be posting content so that you can start a dialogue and, and, and share your expertise and position yourself as an expert in your niche. Right. Yes. All right. That's number three. Let's talk about number four. Yes. My number four favorite one, giving presents, sending pizza, personalized presents. Uh, besides cupcakes, like let's say you have this potential customer or maybe he gave you one coat, send them pizza. It is like only $25. Trust me, it is worth, you know, paying this uh, money. And uh, also like when you give, uh, God or universe will give you back. Maybe it will give you back from another customer, but you have to be open to give. You don't have to go and spend all this money, you know. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but uh, you have to put a little bit, um, you know, touch or that people can feel that, you know, you want to do business with them. I think it is very important. My customers, I sent last time, it was my customer birthday, I sent him two pizzas, one Hawaiian, one buffalo chicken, and it turned out these two, it is his favorite, but I didn't know that it is his favorite. I just sent my favorite pizzas. And he oh said, my gosh. Oh, Lisa, you are so kind. You sent me your my favorite pizza. I said, okay. Well, and he didn't give me lots, you know. It has been like two, three weeks. He didn't give me lots, but that's fine. Maybe next month he will be, you know, more active. Their season will come or they will have more stuff and he will remember me. And uh, I think he will still give me, you know, some lots to move. Yeah, I love that. So here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing, guys. She does this not only with customers that are giving her loads, but with prospects who have never given her loads. Yeah. Okay. She, one quote, you know, yeah. Just, so yeah. she so she spoke to somebody. They gave her the opportunity to quote the freight. She didn't get the load for whatever reason, but she saw the opportunity. She saw the value of that shipper. So she said, you know what? I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to invest a small amount of money for a potential huge return. So you put out 20 or 25 bucks and buy a pizza and have it delivered unsolicited without letting them know, all right, that you're going to send it. And the change in the type of conversation that you're going to have with that person, you got to understand when you give something to somebody, they naturally want to reciprocate. Okay. They want to reciprocate. Now I can't promise you this is going to work hundred percent of the time, but here's what I can promise you. If you develop the basic rapport with a shipper and they give you the opportunity to quote on a shipment and you send that person a pizza. Okay. And you do that 20 times, 20 prospects and you're doing 20 quotes and you're not getting the freight and you're sending pizza to 20 of those people. Let's call that a $500 investment. Now that seems like a lot, right? $500. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. And for a startup it is, but here's the thing. If you get one small shipper, just one, one small shipper that's giving you one load per week. Okay. And you're making 200 bucks on that load. You just turned a $500 investment into over $10,000 in profit. And that's year one. And that's just one shipper. Yes. Now I'm confident you're going to get more than one out of 20 because of that reciprocation and because of the goodwill and the relationship you're going to develop. So I absolutely love that idea that she did talk about with prospects and with customers, it goes without saying, right. Um, yes. You know, and, it, and you should be doing these things other than just Christmas time, other than just their birthday. Right. Because what's happening is this, this would be my tip to you, Lita. It's very common for customers to get gifts around the holidays. So yes. what happens is if you give a gift around the holiday, that's great, but it's almost expected in some ways. The yes. best time to give a gift is when nobody else is giving them a gift. Yes. Okay. Nobody gives a gift for the 4th of July. Okay. Yes. Nobody gives a gift for Halloween. Nobody yes. gives a gift for just some random day throughout the year that you're declaring well, a holiday. I will do the special shopping to bring gifts to my customers from Armenia. 
So yeah, I love it. Yeah. So giving a gift that that's, uh, you know, and again, it's kind of that adage, right? It's the gift that keeps on giving. If you do this, if you practice this, uh, leveraging that to help develop relationships with prospects and your customers, you're going to differentiate yourself from the competition. And those are the things that Lee has talked about today, right? Ways to differentiate herself, ways to start conversations, ways to develop rapport and relationships. And it's no shock to me, and it shouldn't be a shock to you that she's going to do $2 million in sales. And um, and so I'm I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so proud of you because you are really amazing. And you're, you know, you're a great example of what can happen for anybody, male, female, from the U.S., from Armenia, um, young, old, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it, it, you're a great example of what can be. So I'm, I'm super excited that you're here. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to add um, before we close off and go into Q&A? Uh, yes, uh, I want to add this quote that I wrote for my special guests that achieving extraordinary results isn't uh, the la lottery. I hope I pronounce this word correctly. The truth is nothing worth having comes easy. That's what make it worth it. Hustle, 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 and again hustle. <laughs> no, I love that. You broke up. You broke up a little bit. You broke up a little bit. But say that quote again. Let's get. Let's try to clear up the audio. Real the audio and video really quick. Hopefully that'll clear up. I want. I want you to share that one more time once the audio is working because um, I think I know where you're going with this. Are you still with us? Are you frozen or? Bear with us, guys. She's in Armenia, and you know we've got uh, we're connected all around the world here. So give her one second to try to reestablish her connection, and let's see what happens. She's trying to adjust the camera, I think, or adjust her internet connection, and then we'll don't worry, we'll uh, we'll come back in here on live Q and A shortly. So just hold tight, okay? Here she is. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, Lita, are you there? Are you there? Yes. Yeah. I lost my connection. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Can you share that quote with us one more time? Yes. I was just sharing that achieving extraordinary results isn't the lottery. The truth is nothing worth having comes easy. That's what makes it worth it. Hustle, hustle, again, hustle, and be persistent. I love it. I love it. It's not a lottery. You know, I, I talked yeah. about this uh, on a Facebook, a random Facebook post, nothing to do with freight brokering, but I talked about kind of that lottery mentality where, you know, people rely on luck and they rely, you know, and, and hope is beautiful, but it's not a winning strategy. You have to do the work. It's that yeah. simple. Okay. You know, having hope and and, and, and fe feeling lucky and even sometimes being lucky is great, but it's not going to build you a sustainable and predictable long-term business. So I know that Lita's not relying on luck. Uh, I didn't rely on luck. None of my other students have relied on luck and you won't be able to either. But if you apply the four tips she talked about today, uh, I'm confident that that's going to pay you re uh, dividends and returns in the future. So uh, Lita, truly appreciate you being here. Listen, if anybody... Um, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent like Lita, um, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee, okay? Now, for those of you that have been waiting patiently or want to be a part of my freight broker sales accelerator, which is going to be launching very, very soon, okay, I can tell you in the next week, this thing's going to launch. Okay. So the freight broker sales accelerators, where I take that piece of my brain about freight broker sales strategies, systems, tools, and I transplant it into your head in a five week coaching program. Um, now it's not a free program. Um, but if you want to be on the wait list and you want to get considered, I limit this to a hundred students at a time. Okay. So if you want a chance to do that, you got to get on the wait list. You can check it out. Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. And again, Stay tuned because I'm going to be launching that. It's going to launch. I'm going to open enrollment in the next week. So if you're not on the list, you definitely will not have a chance. Uh, it's free to get on the wait list. But again, the program is an investment, but I promise you, you'll get a 10x multiple return on whatever you invest in that program. So uh, thank you so much, Lita, for being here. Um, now we're going to jump into some Q&A. This is my favorite part of the lives. So 
if you guys have a question for Lita or for myself, um, if it's for Lita, say, hey, Lita, please answer this question. If you, if it's for me or if it's for both, we will more than be more than happy to try to answer that question. Because, and I guess again, just so you know, the answer might be different that Lita gives than I give because our perspectives are different, our experience is different, our life experiences are different. She's a woman. I'm a man. She's got different, you know. She has different superpowers than me. I promise you. All right. So, yeah. so um, let's ask those questions. All right, cool. So Martha got on the on the sales accelerator wait list. Yes, uh, everybody should be giving a big thanks to Lita. Uh, I, I did. I see a bunch of thank yous in here, Lita. So your tips were greatly appreciated. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So here's a question for you. I'm going to just let you handle this when it says, hello, language is not going to be a problem in this business. English is my second language and is giving me a little hesitation to start. Well, you let me first start by saying you write very well. Yes, you write very well. And English is my third language. So um, I think uh, you are, you are more, you know, ahead of me. So no. Actually, I have heard people saying me that I have a beautiful accent because of my accent. They remember me because I don't speak all American people. I speak different. Yes. But I am different, you know? <laughs> it's funny because when you came on, when we jumped on live before, you know, we opened it up to everybody, what did I tell you? What's one of the first things I told you? Yes, you said you have... You, you have Beautiful accent, I guess. I love good. your accent. Yes. I do love your accent because it, you, you know, you wouldn't even have to be live on video. And if I heard your voice, I would always remember it because you have a very distinctive voice. I love it. And I think it's perfect. I think that's a great point. And just so you know, I'm going to reinforce this. We've, I've interviewed, we've had thousands of students. Okay. But I've interviewed students that have went on to build successful business. And I can't tell you how many now that I've interviewed that English is their second or third language. Yes. Okay. We got Yogi Goswami, who's from India, who's everybody's mm -hmm. favorite. By the way, he did $1.8 million last month. Okay. Um, we got Lita. We've got other students that are, where it's their second or third language and they're thriving in this business. Now they could have easily went the route of making the excuse that, well, you know, I, my English isn't perfect. People won't like me. Here's the thing. There's going to be some people that aren't going to like your accent. There's going to yes. be some people. They're going to be some people that don't like the fact that you don't speak perfect English. Who gives a shit? Find the ones that do. Filter right. out and find the and ones I that do. This story. I called one lady and she got on my nerves. She she would say, "I don't understand you," and I got mad. I said, "How you don't understand me? If 99% of people understand me, say." She said, I have 0.1% of these people. I say, okay, bye-bye. I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Move on to the next one. <laughs> exactly. Move on. Don't let those ones slow you down. But good question. Thank you for asking. I hope that helped. All right. Let's scroll down. Okay. So here's a question from Fadil Fadil. Live in Rochester, New York. Okay. So you're my neighbor. And I know many warehouses, is it okay to go to them and start asking them like crazy? Is it okay to bring gifts with me? Um, okay, so if I'm understanding your question correctly, you're asking, is it okay to visit them unsolicited? Meaning you haven't talked to them on the phone, you haven't emailed them, you're going to do just what's called a walk-in. The answer is yes, but no one thing. Unsolicited walk-ins are you're going to typically get a little bit higher rejection than if you were to have emailed or talked to them and scheduled an appointment. But if you can't get people on the phone, going out there and visiting them, right? Going to the front desk, trying to see if you can get through the gatekeeper or better yet, going around the back to the shipping dock and walking up on the shipping dock and asking who the shipping manager is with a bunch of cupcakes in hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I promise you, that it's going to be very hard for them to throw you out of there, right? Number one, you're giving them a gift. They want to reciprocate and they may not reciprocate with free, but they may reciprocate with five minutes of time. Okay. And that time is your opportunity to develop rapport in a relationship. And that's all you're going to get out of that. You're, you're getting in at bat. You're not getting a guarantee. You're just getting up to bat. They're going to throw a pitch and now you've got to hit the ball. 
right? So it's not a guarantee, but it's a starting point. All right. Anything you want to add to that, Lita? No, I think you said it all. It is okay <laughs> to go. And sometimes uh, they have this sign, no solicitation and whatever. Uh, sometimes, honestly, just break these rules because if yeah. you follow all these rules, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I just, uh, sometimes I will just go and uh, if they say, okay, we, we don't accept visitors i say okay i'm sorry about that but i will tell you this if you're going with a gift and they have a no solicitation they'll never mind if you leave a gift at the front and here's a yes. secret right here's a secret what i'm going to tell you if there's a if there's a receptionist or someone at the front desk okay and you've got a dozen cupcakes with you or a half a dozen cupcakes with you or whatever you're going to give them okay take one of those cupcakes out and give it to the receptionist. Yes, exactly. Okay. The person in the back is not going to mind and it's going to ensure that the people that on the shipping dock actually mm -hmm. get it. And they're probably going to say, Oh my God, this really nice man or this really nice lady came in and gave these to you. And she left her card and she'd love to talk to you. And that's it. There's no yeah. promises. But if you, if you do run into an unsolicited, no solicitation sign, trust me, no one's going to yell at you. They're not going to call the cops or you can go around the back to the shipping warehouse, to the warehouse or to the dock. And then you can try to get in that way or both, right? Remember yes. this is chess. It's not checkers. And what I mean by that is any five-year-old can play checkers, but it's very I would hard. always go to warehouse because the doors were open and people are more willing to talk. So yes. people are not so, yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Okay. Good question. All right. Let's scroll down. Okay, so here's, I don't know if this is a question, but this is a comment and I want to have a conversation with you about this because this is very important. Rajinder says, sometimes shippers give the same load to four brokers. Now, Rajinder, you're 100% correct. And I call those shippers, that freight, I call that freight, jump ball freight. And why I call it jump ball is because if you're familiar with basketball, there's one guy that lines guy or girl that lines up on this side. And there's one guy or girl that lands up on this side and the ref throws a ball up in the air and whoever jumps the highest gets the ball. So that's why I've always called it jump ball freight. I don't know anybody else who refers to it that way, but that's what I refer to it. And yeah. I do not play that game. I tried that game when I was young and when I was first starting in the business, because I was just happy that somebody was going to email me a load that I could work on. But what I realized very carefully is that number one, they don't value my time. They don't value my experience. They don't value me. All they're trying to do is get their load covered. And so the problem with that strategy is that maybe if you're able to cover, let's say you were able to cover one or two out of 10 of those loads and you call that shipper back, by the time you call that shipper back, guess what they're going to say? It's already covered. And the problem is you spent all that time and energy trying to cover that load. And that is the one thing we can't get back is time. Okay. So my suggestion to you is do not work on jump ball freight, right? What you need to do is you need to build rapport with that person. And if there are lanes that they're putting on that load list that go out to four or five brokers, explain to them why they should dedicate those loads to you. And if they don't agree, then go find somebody that's willing to give you dedicated loads because jump ball freight is a sure fire way and one of the fastest ways to go broke in this business. Okay. Lead anything you want to add, even though you might cover a load here and there, just think about all the time and energy you're going to spend covering loads that you don't get paid on and the math yeah. won't work. Yeah, I worked with this type of shipper in the beginning, as you said, because I was like very happy that he gave me lots. But then, um, yeah, it was very like stressful and I was only making 50 bucks or 100 bucks and he didn't want to pay detention. So, and we broke up. He was the only one customer. <laughs> we broke up. <laughs> yes, we got divorced. <laughs> that's hysterical. I love that. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So if, you know, and I understand a shipper's doing what they need to do, but your job is to differentiate yourself on why you're different and why they should dedicate that freight to you. And the reason why they should dedicate it is number one, it's going to make the price more, um, 
the price is going to be more consistent. The service is going to be more consistent and they're going to have less stress because they're going to know that you're, you're, whenever the Buffalo to Atlanta flatbed load comes up, all I got to do is call Lita because Lita always has a truck. I don't need to put it out to the universe and hope that all the freight gets covered. Okay. Remember hope is not a winning strategy for brokers and it's definitely not a winning strategy for shippers. Okay. All right. Next question. Oh, okay. All right. What, what's the formula to calculate fuel surcharge and who gets it broker or carrier? Okay. So fuel surcharge, um, is one of those things that can be a little bit complex, but what I'm going to urge you before we go into that is as a new broker, the best thing you can do to simplify the quoting process is to provide what's called all in rates. It's a flat all in rate. So there are two ways to rate things predominantly as a flat rate where it includes all the, the miles and fuel and line haul and everything in it. And let's say that's a thousand dollars. Okay. Just hypothetically. So you're giving that shipper an all in rate and that's a spot quote. The other way to do it is to do line haul where you're doing a per mile rate plus a fuel surcharge, which is usually a cents per mile or a percentage. Okay. Okay. So it's a lot more complex to quote that way. Now, if you want to, if you want to start using fuel surcharge as a part of your quoting system, or if a shipper requires you to do that, typically the shipper is going to give you a fuel surcharge sheet that you're going to go by. They're going to say, here's my cents per mile. Here's my percentage. If it's a cents per mile, then all you got to do is multiply the miles of the loads times the cents per mile, and that's the fuel surcharge. If you're doing a percentage, it's a percentage of the line haul. So if the line haul is uh, five, I'm just using easy math, okay? This is not exact math. This is easy math. If the line haul is $1,000, okay, because it's 1,000 miles at a dollar a mile, okay, and that's not the rates, but I'm just giving you easy math, and it's a, and it's a percentage of 20%, you're going to the fuel surcharge would then be $200 because it's a percentage of the line haul. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Do you want to add anything on that, Lita? I mean, some shippers require freight plus fuel, line haul plus fuel. Um, but in volatile markets, most of them are looking for spot rates. So what is your take on that? Well, you might be surprised, but I still don't know how to calculate this surcharge. Honestly, I, I knew it. My, uh, my first customer who gave me like 200 lanes, I didn't sleep till 5 a.m. and I caught it these 200 lanes with sur surcharge. But flatbed customers, they don't require surcharge. So I just gave all in, you know, all in. You gave an all in flat, all in rate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The pros and cons of an all in rate versus having a line haul plus fuel is this. I'm just going to tell you the difference. An all in rate. If fuel skyrockets up, then that all-in rate is not going to be good anymore. If fuel goes down, then it's not necessarily going to be accurate anymore. Whereas if you do a line haul plus fuel, which is what some shippers require, if fuel goes up, your rate will flex up. And if your fuel goes down, the rate will flex down. Okay, so that's the benefit. All right, so I hope that helps. And uh, I can add that most of the time, these uh, fuel surcharge customers, they are big companies that they have semi, the same lanes. Like yeah. if it is a customer who has lanes from different states to different states, they don't have it. Yeah, you're right. I think you're right. It is typically a little bit bigger customers and it's exactly. lanes that are heavy volume recurring yes. freight. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. Perfect. All right. Great. Let's go on to the next one. All right. So here's a question for Lita. Hey, Lita, please answer this question. How did you obtain your first client without experience? How'd you get the first one? Talk to us about that first client. What happened? Well, first client that I moved the first lot. Yes. The customer that he gave me like three or four times. I don't even remember how many times he gave me this lot. And every time I couldn't move it because first I was trying to move it with my brokerage. Then finally, I joined to Freytag and I told my customer, hey, I'm joining Freytag. I promise I will move this lot. And he gave me this lot, which he gave me for 6000 I posted it for 5000 And when the carrier called me, I was so happy that 
I didn't even call, let him to negotiate. I said, hey, I will pay you 5,500. Can you move this lot? And he said, yes. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and I made $500, my first lot. How yeah. I found, okay, the question was how I found. I found him in LinkedIn. Then I sent him very funny email. And then he said, nice catch, Lita. And then he started to give me lots. Right. So, <laughs> so guys, you know, here's the thing. It's not, it's not about, um, being this polished, perfect salesperson. That's not what it's about. I was talking to Lita about how I make all kinds of mistakes in these lives and in trainings. And I made just as many mistakes selling. Okay. I wasn't perfect. And when I first started, I was absolutely horrific. Okay. I don't know why anybody bought from me, but um, it's not about being perfect, right? It's about being you. You could see how she developed. She made him laugh, right? She came at it from a different angle. She didn't sound like every other broker out there. And even though he knew she wasn't, didn't have a ton of experience, he still wanted to do business with her because she was different, not because she was better. Remember, there's that old saying. I didn't coin this phrase. I think it was Sally Hogshead. Who I know said. what you are going to say. Different is better than better. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she knows that because she's heard me say it hundreds and hundreds of times in these yeah. trainings, and I can't stress it enough. And that's all she did. She was a little bit different. And it's hard to After replicate. A of months, he, he emailed me. He said, Lita, you are not only a good friend, but you are becoming a great business partner. I love it. Yeah, See, he gave awesome. me one lot, then four lots, then 200 lots. So Look at that. How yeah. Exactly. Perfect. I love it. So there's your answer, guys. That's how she got her first customer. And that's not unusual. If I were to bring on Yogi or if I were to bring on Eloy or if I were to bring on any of the other success stories that I've highlighted, you would hear very similar types of stories. Okay. All right. Let me scroll down. All right. Are you free? Okay. So Lita is a freight agent. Okay. Just, I'm going to answer a couple questions on here that don't, don't require a lot of time. She does have a beautiful accent. I agree. I love her accent. When you first started for the flatbed niche, how did you learn? Okay, here you go. All right. So here's a question for you, Lita. When you first started for the flatbed niche, how did you learn about the steel industry or how did you start the niche with little information to discuss with shippers? So what did you do in preparation for the, the flatbed niche? Yeah. Well, uh, when I was in nursing school, my clinical in instructor would say, fake it until you make it, right? And I hate this saying because it is not fake it until you make it. You, like, I got this customer. Honestly, I didn't even know what is coil when I started. But then I did the research. I went to Google. I have a friend, he's a flatbed truck driver. I called him, like, first couple of lots, I would always call him. I would say, hey, Jaja uh, Pasha, help me. I have this lot, dimensions are these, which equipment I need, what I have to do, and he would always help me. And so that's how I learned. And when you learn first few lots, then it is the same lot. When you learn once or twice, then you already know this customer. So you learn it, you know, you don't pretend that you know it, but you learn it. You go and you learn it. Listen, everybody is bad at something before they're good at something. Everybody. Yes. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're baking a cake. I don't care if you're selling. I don't care what you're doing. If you're playing a game, if you're playing chess, like we were just talking about, everybody's bad before they're good. The problem with most people is they're not willing to be bad. They're not willing to not have all the answers. Now, my suggestion to you is do everything Alita talked about and more in due diligence to try to prepare yourself. Yeah. Another good source of information are the load boards, right? A great source of information. One of the best sources of information you will ever get will be from carriers. Okay. Yeah. And then another source of information is from other brokers and agents. So you, if you network and have relationships with other brokers and agents, as long yeah. as you're not doing business with the same customer, they don't care. They don't consider you a competitor. 
And so ultimately they will help you. Another and great she press. She press will teach you. They yes. will say, hey, I need an air ride trailer. I need a, a coil rack. I need chain. I need tarp. I need six feet tarp, you know? I mean, you have to ask questions, but they will let you know what, what you need. So. That's but most of all, but most of all, you have to be willing to ask questions and you have yes. to be willing to not have all the answers before you have all the answers. Study as much as you can. You know, this is the greatest time in the history of business for you to be able to learn a new skill, whether that be a niche that you're diving into like steel or flatbed or produce or whatever niche it is or learning a skill like sales, like we're talking about with the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator that's coming up, hint, hint, okay, get on the wait list. Um, but yeah, we, we're in the greatest time in the history of anybody that wants to learn anything. You have the internet, you have YouTube, you've got blogs, you've got uh, everything under the sun at your fingertips, okay? Yeah. When I first started in sales back in uh, 1992, okay, which is seems like a really long time ago and embarrassing, but here's the thing. When I started sales in 1992, the internet barely existed. Like, I don't even think I'd ever even been on the internet at that point. I had to learn training from books and from cassette tapes. They didn't even have DVDs. It was cassette tapes. I had, used to have a cassette player in my car, which was the jankiest old car you've ever seen. But I had this car and I would put cassette tapes in it and I would listen to them while I, drop, while I was driving. So you have all the advantages. There's no excuses for not being able to learn something very quickly in this day and age. Okay. And that includes your niche. All right. All right. A couple more questions and we're going to wrap it up for today. Yes, she is awesome. Great tips. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sending email. Okay. So let's talk. Let's see what this one is. Uh, Birdie asks, either can answer either can answer. We are a new brokerage and have been sending emails and making calls with no luck. Do you suggest we immediately start visiting the local companies? Okay. Lita, you want to start with that? Feel free. It's up to you. I mean, it's hard to answer that question, but you can just give a little bit of perspective or add a little color to it if you'd like. Yeah. Well, if someone asks me this question, honestly, I would just say, go and uh, become an agent. I know that you open this brokerage. I know that um, you spend this money, but uh, I think being an agent is a very important experience, it's especially if you are not very experienced in business and you don't have this working capital and you don't have, because succeeding in brokerage, I think one ha needs to have at least two people that one can do like back office, one can do like movements and freight, because one person cannot do all because it is not possible, I think, in the beginning. Yeah, uh, it's a lot easier. I'd say it before. It's a lot easier to make money as a freight agent than it is as a freight broker. Yes. And, he, and here's my, my famous quote that I tell everybody. If you can't make money as a freight agent, you'll never make money as a freight broker. Okay. I know yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she, and, and Lita's speaking from experience. She started her own freight brokerage and she struggled to move any loads. There were yeah. some issues, right? People didn't know who her company was. She didn't no have credit. credit she didn't have yeah. credit established with carriers yet. And so she said, you know what? She even, we even talked about it over Facebook messenger. And she's like, I'm thinking of, of moving from my brokerage to an agent. And I, and I've said it before. I'm like, listen, uh, it's a no brainer. If you pick a reputable company like freight tech, okay. Who's got a right. long history and good credit and a lot of tools they can supply you and you can learn and you can build your book of business. If you choose, you can always pivot later to your own brokerage. Yes. You're not committed lifetime. I mean, yes. I'm sure Freight Tech would love to retain you and keep you as an agent forever, but who knows what the future may hold. Maybe you'll be an agent yes. 10 years from now, but maybe 10 years from now you convert it over to your own brokerage because yes. you were ready to do it and you were positioned to succeed. And yes. um, so, yeah, so my take on that is this. You're sending emails. The hard part about answering this question is I've got five questions I want to ask you before I can answer this question, but I can't do it in this format. Okay. So most people that ask this question probably have not um, done enough outreach to enough contacts. I had a conversation with a student not long ago through messenger and they sent me a message and they said, 
very similar to this question. I've been emailing and I've been calling and I'm not getting any customers and now I'm getting discouraged. Okay. And then the question I asked them was, okay, how many emails and calls did you actually send? And there was a little bit of a pause and there was no response. And then I came back later that day and they said 50. And I said, okay, 50. 50 is nothing. 50 is just the beginning. You've made 50 calls and sent 50 emails. What are your expectations? You have not set your expectations properly. Now there might be people on the first 50 phone calls or the first 50 emails that get customers. Come talk to me after you have 50 conversations with shippers, okay? After you're on the phone with 50 shippers and you have 50 conversations or 50 email dialogues, come back to me then and then tell me that you don't have any shippers and then we'll work on this. And they said, oh, good point. I never heard from them again. So my hope, my hope is they took my advice and then they flourished, okay? But ultimately what it comes down to is some people are going to take days, some people are going to take weeks, and some people are going to take months. As a matter of fact, I had a, I had a student on not long ago who took three months to get their first shipper. They were extremely discouraged, but they didn't give up. Um, and they just kept going and they kept learning. And from there, they got their first shipper. And now they're, make, now they're sticking over six figures per year in profit in their pocket. Okay, but it took them three months to get their first customers. Yeah. So don't give up. I can't I'm critique so exactly what's going on, but I do like the idea if you can supplement your emails and calls with face-to-face, -face, whenever you can do that, try to do that. Because what you're going to find is you're not going to be able to touch as many people, but the quality of the conversation is going to be better. All right. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Lita. You were saying something? Uh, no, I was just saying that I didn't find my shipper very fast. It took me a couple of months. It's not right. a one-day process, you know. You have to, yeah, I mean, you get in this courage, you cry, you get stressed, <laughs> but then you wake up and then you start all over. You cannot give up, you know. You have to. That's right. That's right. You, that, there's a book. I think it's a book, and it's called Three Feet from Gold. And the whole lesson behind that book is, and there's a picture, there's an infamous picture that always sticks in my head. There's this miner who's got a pickaxe and he's digging through the side of a hill and there's gold just on the other side and he quits right before, but you could see he's so close to gold and he quits. Yeah, he quits yeah. And then somebody else comes in and starts in that mine and all of a sudden they get, they hit the gold. And that's what happens if you quit too soon. So not quitting. no, there's no quitting. All right. I love it. All right. And listen, this is just a reminder here. If you guys are still on here, it means you're obviously enjoying the training. You're obviously enjoying Lita's tips and the Q&A is beneficial to you. If you need help, a lot of these questions are about getting shippers. Okay. And I know the reason why I put the whole freight broker sales accelerator together is that exact reason, because setting up your brokerage and learning how to do some basic rating and learning how to use load boards and setting up your home office and 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 learning how to dispatch drivers that's really the easiest part of the business the people the place where people struggle the most is in getting customers mm -hmm. and i was asked for over a decade can you put together an advanced sales training program can you teach me this sales program so I put two of them together. One is the no cold calling course, which you just talked about, which is my social selling program. It's all about LinkedIn and using LinkedIn. But the new one that I just released last year is called my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. Now, the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator is where I take all of my best sales strategies, tactics, tools, and I put them into an entire system. And that system is designed so that someone with very little very little experience in sales, right? Can take that as a blueprint and a roadmap and can go out and effectively get shippers and predictably get shippers and build a real business, okay? So there's a lot to it. I'm gonna be releasing it very soon. But if you want a chance to be a part of that Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program, you gotta be on the wait list because if you're not, this sells out. Typically this sells out. I don't think we've ever went more than three days without it selling out from release. I know I sold it out one time in 24 hours, okay? 
And usually it's within 24 to 72 hours that it sells out because I limit it to 100 spots, okay? So if you want a chance to be on that program and you want to get notified of that program, as soon as it comes out, you just got to get on the wait list. And Lita, are there any parting pieces of advice you want to share with the audience before we close off? I know you I know you had a very long day because in Armenia, it's very late right now. What time is it now? Yes, it is 9 p.m., but it is still early here. I work till 2 a.m. or sometimes oh 3 a.m., so that's good. Well, I want you to share because Lida is a girl who likes to save, you know. She doesn't like to spend all this money on courses. But, um, and Dennis, he didn't tell me that I should tell you. But if you guys really want to become a successful freight broker or freight broker agent and you don't know where to start or you don't know what to do, you have to invest and it will give you like motivation. For me, when I bought this course, I was like very motivated. I was very determined that, hey, I spent this $1,000. I am going to return this $1,000. And I made over $100,000, you know? So yeah. not only taking the course is not enough. You have to take it and go and do it. That's yeah. right. You have to apply yeah. that knowledge. There's yeah. there's a saying in the coaching and training and in the in the in the teaching business. It's this: people that pay pay attention. Yes. And so I limit this to a small group of people that are willing to invest. And I know I can't give it to everybody, but the fact that I keep it a small group of people allows me to spend more time with those people. So I had a choice. Mm -hmm. I could give it away very cheap to hundreds of thousands of people, or I could charge a little bit more and not be able to spend a lot of time with them because there's too many people, or I could limit it to a small group of people where I could invest heavily in them and I could help them, you know, to go like I did from having little or no experience to, you know, to building successful business, just like Lita did. So thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, did you get a snap of us? Did you get a, did you get a, did you get a picture of us? Awesome. See, she's creating content. She's creating content right now. Don't be surprised if you see that somewhere on her social media. Listen, I want to thank you so much, Lita, for being here. You're amazing. Yeah, find me in LinkedIn and in Instagram, okay? I am in LinkedIn and in Instagram. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you make sure you connect with her on, on LinkedIn and Instagram. That would be great. She's got great content and she's always willing to help people. This is her second time being here. I tried to pay her for her time because I know her time is valuable, but she wouldn't even accept the money. So thank you so much yeah. for being here. One, one hour costs like $100,000. So I don't want to charge you. Oh enough. my gosh. Well, you know what? For some people that probably would have been worth it because I'll bet you somebody in this group comes out of this and leverages what you learned. If they put it to work, um, yes. I'll bet you they're able to make $100,000 in the near future. So thank you so much for being here. You're awesome. Everybody have an awesome day. Make sure you sign up for the wait list. If you're just getting started and you're curious about becoming a freight broker, go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Trained over 10,000 students, been in business over a decade, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money back guarantee. And if that doesn't help, come back next Monday because I'll be doing another live free training. Have an awesome week. Thank you, Lita. I really appreciate your time. Have an awesome day. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you for inviting me, Dan. All right. Thank you, dear. All right. Bye-bye, guys.